in the sports world today. We've got a lot going on. We've got college baseball. We're going to touch on that because college baseball is finally coming down to tournament time. Uh, we've got all of the different tournaments going on for the conferences. A lot of fun there. We're going to talk about that. Also get into the softball college world series. Uh, so we're going to touch on softball. We're we're big proponents of the softball game here on this show, at least myself, obviously being a Sooners fan. We're going to touch on the softball World Series and everything going on there. And then, of course, also catching up with the NHL playoffs and the NBA playoffs. <coughs> we're going to talk about all of this and much more today on Rising to the Occasion. Um, first, starting off, we want to mention our sponsors for this evening. Our sponsors, as always, SeatGeek. SeatGeek is an amazing sponsor, amazing service uh, just an amazing overall platform because if you're a fan of live events, whether it be sports or theater or music, whatever the case may be, you know how challenging it can be to find the right tickets at the right price. Uh, that's where SeatGeek comes into play because with a seamless mobile experience, you can buy and sell tickets in just a couple of taps. It doesn't get any simpler than the way that SeatGeek does it. And it gets even better because SeatGeek also grades every, every uh, ticket from red to green in this color coding system that helps you find the good deals very easily. Uh, SeatGeek is an amazing app because if you download the app or go online to SeatGeek.com, you check it out, you can see the entire blueprint of the arena, stadium, wherever it is that you're going, and you know exactly where you're going to sit. Uh, you can even see a preview of what your seats look like. And then, of course, looking at those red, yellow, and green dots, you know, to search for those green dots to find yourself the best deal on there. Uh, and it gets even better because on top of that, every purchase is fully guaranteed. So you can shop securely and with, with a complete peace of mind, knowing that your information, your personal and your payment information are both completely safe. And on top of that, your tickets are going to scan in at the door. And we love SeatGeek so much that we teamed up with them to get you $20 off your next ticket purchase. That's right, $20 off your next ticket purchase at SeatGeek.com or by downloading the SeatGeek app today. You can use that code R2TO and get yourself $20 off your next ticket purchase. SeatGeek, life's an event, and we have your tickets. Now let's go ahead and get into it because, like I said, we've got a lot to touch up on whenever it comes to everything going on in the sports world right now because we've we've got baseball going on. We've got, uh, like I mentioned, softball, hockey, uh, basketball. So we're going to touch on all of this first, bringing in my co-hosts for the evening. Uh, we've got the man on the other side of Sioux City. Jeremy, how we doing? Doing pretty good, then. It's been a fun time watching all the playoffs, obviously, going on between the NBA and the NHL. That's the that's the big thing I've definitely been staying on top of. But NHL playoffs, obviously, every team but one right now is looking into the next round. And obviously, you've got a game seven situation. It's going to be it's going to be a real nail biter, I think, compared to the last game being a not what I definitely expected but yeah. no it's been it's definitely been fun to watch all the playoffs and everything break down and just see who's gonna turn up at the end of the night but josh i know we got a lot to talk about i'm gonna cut a chit chat let's get kicking with it yeah absolutely yeah a lot of fun in both of those playoffs right now but then we've also sure. got my other co-host from mobile alabama we've got the man the myth the legend blake it's been a little while man welcome back to the show what's up what's up what's up glad to be here fellas uh yeah look NBA playoffs, NHL playoffs, uh, they've been electric. The Women's College World Series coming up, that's been going on. Uh, college baseball getting into the postseason. Uh, look, sports is uh, sports is on the high right now, and it, it's been really fun to watch those NBA playoffs. The Ant-Man, uh, yeah. he put on a show last night. I know he didn't have the best yes, stats, but, yeah, it, it was fun to watch. Uh, he, he's electric, and I think he's giving the NBA some life. So, yeah, just – all the good stuff. The game seven tonight, Edmonton, Connor McDavid. Can he get it done? I know uh, a, a lot of people around the world are wanting to see him move on just because he brings that electricity factor, man, to the game. So uh, a, a lot of good stuff in the sports world right now. Well, here, Blake, you're not as much of a hockey watcher. You're kind of a casual watcher. So yeah, name off a name off a, a star on the Canucks for me. Uh, I don't, I don't think there is one. That's what I'm saying. Like they, they've got guys that step <laughs> up. They've got, they've got the best team chemistry that I've seen because they've just got a bunch of good guys all yeah. combining it all together. And they've just got the chemistry. The, the coaching has been phenomenal. Figuring out the line mm -hmm. changes at the right times, who to, who to put on the ice at the right times. It just yep. doesn't make any sense to me, man. I have a hard time getting behind the Canucks because I look at them and I'm like, who is this team? Why are they on the ice right now? This is playoff hockey. Do they realize where they're at? 
um, because mm. man, it's it's crazy. But uh, before we get into NHL, which I know Jeremy is extremely excited to talk about, but before we get to that, something that I know we've been talking about for a while, pretty much since the release. Uh, Jeremy and I just talked about uh, the the trailer being released for it and everything. We've got college football video game coming back to us. Yeah. I wanted to start off by reading a couple of these because I I made sure to pre order the game, got it pre ordered, so I know that I'm I'm in there for the three day access, uh, early access, which I'm pretty sure just everybody's got it got the three day three day early access. If you're yeah. if you're gonna play the game, you might as well get it early because well. you don't want to be the last one of the party. Uh, you know That's what if fun. what if what if all of a sudden like you didn't get the three day access and everybody tells you it's garbage, that that sucks. <laughs> so yeah. no, but I I was I was on I was on there and I got on the Xbox was like oh you know what I'm just gonna pre order it so I'm ready to go, and I started seeing some of these reviews, and I think it's pretty pretty uh, unanimous I guess uh, would be the right word it's pretty unanimous of how the feelings are with this video game coming back to life because. Um, <laughs> I was looking through these. So the first one that I saw, uh, this is from Redmond Don. He says, wife said it's me or the game. Just got deluxe. I'm pumped. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then That's I, good. I, I oh my keep on scrolling goodness. through and I see this one. Breadwinner Chief says, I feel sorry for all the kids. They got to wait till Christmas. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, that's so a good pretty one. much pretty much everybody is going to be getting it, except for the kid that can't buy it for himself. And his parents are saying, no, you don't need that. But let's be honest, those kids probably don't have as much ex- as excitement as like you and I would. So yeah, just to be fair. Um, then I saw this one, Mog Shad, uh, M O G Shad. Um, he says, I divorced my wife just for you in CAA. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Getting rid of the wife, wow. making sure there's no distractions in the house. I love it. Wow. Uh, I love the dedication. Love the dedication. I don't condone it, but Dang. I like the dedication. Uh, and then we, let's see. Uh, we see, Joe BTW fifty one says, "If this flops, I'm pulling nine eleven on EA's headquarters." <laughs> Golly, just going Insane. all out there. I need to uh, go to church. <laughs> Mike DXXI says, "Kiss your kiss your wife and kids because it's time to get active." <laughs> Not oh going to be seeing them God. too much. Instead, you're going to be looking at the TV screen. Um, then T Fergus Fer- Ferge Ferges. Uh, he says, this is the greatest thing to happen to this country. God bless America. I salute you, sir. I salute <laughs> you. Um, let's see. There was some some very not PG-13 ones that I really wanted to read off. And there's even one that I did put down, and I'm like, yeah, maybe I'm not going to do this because it's more of a family-friendly show. Um, but this one, I think I can read this one. He says, Super Big Bot says, I just bought this game and already my life has turned around. My crush called me and said she liked me. Then the sun literally came out of the clouds. <laughs> this game is changing lives already and it hasn't even come out. I thought it was hilarious that there was even reviews on a game that you can't even access yet. But oh that's how pumped. Uh, that, oh my you know, God. One thing, one thing I'll say, I think the, the teams that I saw supported the most. I saw a lot of Ohio State. Saw a lot of Auburn. Auburn might have been the number one uh, that I was seeing in all of the reviews, like uh, you know War, War Damn Eagle and all this. You know, so a lot of a lot of Auburn guys in there. I saw a couple of Texas, a couple of Oklahoma. Uh, saw a few Big Blue or Go Go Blue. Uh, that was pretty much it, though. So I mean, we're we're kind of seeing which which fans are really stepping up a little bit. A little bit of Bama, not much, but I feel like Bama fans have kind of died off since since their coach they left. Him, right? <laughs> so. But no, I just I wanted to read those off because there were so many other ones that I wanted to, and I was like, "Yeah, this one's." I'll, I'll send this last one that I got. I'll send that to the group chat just so you guys can get a good All laugh right. out of this one. There but, you go. Maybe not PG thirteen. I was saying that's an off air segment. It's hilarious. Uh, you know, the, the the one that I read off might not be appropriate, but still hilarious ne- ne- nevertheless. Uh, we will definitely burn this place to the ground if it doesn't live up to the hype. We're extremely excited. Can't wait. Uh, and we pretty much, so uh, another thing too, something that we didn't mention last time, cause we weren't sure I looked at it. It is cr- cross platform. So it doesn't even matter what, what consoles you're on. So Jeremy, if you want to stick to cool. PlayStation, it's all good. Although if I, I can find one. my experience in the past with, with, uh, cross platform is that it's like a little more laggy, uh, you know, so that's the only downside to it, but still cross platform is available. So that's pretty awesome. Um, but let's go ahead and get into the college baseball conference tournaments Blake you are the resident baseball guy you are the baseball guy 
much like the Ohio State, you are the baseball guy. <laughs> so we're going to rely on you for some of this because I'm more or less a – so I've, I've watched the SEC and I've watched the Big 12. Outside of that, I was looking over at the Big 10 tournament today and seeing what was going on uh, over there, and I was kind of like surprised – at some of that because, let's see, it all starts tomorrow for the most part. Uh, I think all the Power Four, uh, I guess Power Five right now, uh, starts yeah. tomorrow. But I was, like, looking at some of the some of the the, uh, the conference tournaments and, and some of the teams that were in there, I'm thinking, like, Big Ten. Who's who's going to come out of the Big Ten and, and make any kind of a threat? Uh, but, yeah, I, I don't know, I'm not, I'm not seeing too much from the Big Ten. Um, but I we can start I believe off. I believe Illinois won the regular season title. Yeah, in the Illinois, Big Illinois, they they do look good. Um, that's yeah. probably the only team that I can say would be a little dangerous. Um, yeah, I don't know if they're oh, man. Most likely, they're Omaha worthy. Barely. It's hard to pick anybody in baseball from the Big Ten. It that's really what I'm is. Saying. It's tough. That's, that's what I'm saying. I mean, I'm just I'm looking at it, uh, and it's. I, I just I don't I don't like the Big Ten, but we'll start off with the ACC. Uh, the ACC, mm. I do think there's some good baseball uh, being played on the ACC. Some tough teams. Um, let's see here if I can get this to pull up properly. I did have everything down in my notes, all nice and organized, and nothing saved on me. So that was that was wonderful. But going on, the, going on the going on the fly, uh, I guess we'll just kind of open it up. Uh, I mean, Blake, we'll kind of start off with you since you're more of the baseball guy. You probably watch more overall baseball than the rest of us. Uh, who are you looking at in the ACC? Thinking, thinking uh, that's that's a that's a pretty good team to to be watching out there. Uh, I would I would zero in on NC State right now. I think they're really hot. Um, the Duke Blue Devils. That's another one that I would look at. Uh, obviously, Wake Forest. You never know with them. Uh, they're just they're not what they were last year, but they've always got the potential. Uh, to really hit the long ball, they got to get the pitching right. That's that's my big concern with Wake Forest. Uh, but I think the team that's playing the hottest right now, uh, in my opinion, that I would kind of zero in on is I think NC State uh, is potentially the one that could make a run. You know, obviously, you know you you got the North Carolinas, the Clemsons, the Miamis, and Florida State. Florida you know. State. Uh, yeah, you, you got those, uh, but, it, man, to me, I, I, I really like this NC State team. I think they could be one of those teams that uh, maybe not many people are really focused on but could end up in Omaha, Nebraska. Yeah, and I, I feel like Wake Forest is definitely one of those teams that you're always watching in the ACC. I feel like that's always just a baseball school. It's always a, yeah. it's always a, a, a school that you're watching out for. Uh, and then, of course, you mentioned, you mentioned Clemson. That's one that I was – Looking at thinking, uh, based on their road, I think they've got a pretty good road. But, yeah, you, you brought up NC State being the hottest team. I think that's what matters the most, especially when you get to this moment. Who's Who's been on that roll? Uh, yeah. yeah, and so I, I like NC State. Um, I guess, Jeremy, you got you got any other names to throw in there? I mean, the ACC? I'm, for looking at the ACC, I'm curious to what Florida State's obviously going to do. But, like, another team outside of Florida State that I – I, I kind of feel bad if I can't mention them as always Virginia Tech. I mean, they're, I mean they may be set on number 10 right now, but, I mean, still the, any of these teams, obviously, if you made it this far in the turn, me in the season, you know you're pretty dang good if I had to say the least. There's not a team on here that you can't say that, oh, they're, they barely squeeze by here just to get in this situation. I'm like, no, they actually are pretty dang good if I do say so for myself. But, I mean, I'm curious to what Virginia Tech and, like I said, Florida State's obviously going to do. I know Florida State's at five, then Virginia Tech is at ten. But, I mean, there there's a lot of good teams, obviously, that can, that can do anything at this situation. Yeah, I would say really, like, to me it feels like SEC and ACC are, are the baseball conferences. Mm-hmm. Uh, that just feels like the, the most – most well-rounded conferences in baseball, and I feel like that's year in, year out. Uh, quite a bit. You have some Big 12 teams that show up in there, and they make a fuss. Uh, so I, I do think the Big 12 is a pretty good conference overall when it comes to baseball, uh, especially this year, man, because they got that number one seed Oklahoma over there mm-hmm. looking mighty hot. Here uh, no, we o- go. Oklahoma, I'm, it's, it's been a lot of fun. So I, I started off with Oklahoma softball whenever I was kind of getting back into baseball and mm-hmm. watched a little bit of Oklahoma baseball – they just they they weren't as exciting to watch, and so it's hard to stick with them. Still try to stay tuned with them uh, and get myself back into that sport because I, I love baseball, especially getting back into it. Uh, there's it's so much more fun 
uh, than, than uh, you know, what I was giving it credit for in the years that I wasn't watching it as closely. Uh, and so, mm-hmm. you know, what watching Oklahoma, what was that, 2021 or 22, whenever they made it to Omaha, they made it to the College World Series. I think that was 22. 22. Yeah. 22. Okay, yeah, because I'm pretty sure that, that it was 22. They made it to the – yeah, because it would have been 23 last year, 22 this year, the year before. So they made it to the College World Series – I didn't make it down to go because uh, I was uh, at the time. I think I was still in Illinois. I was trying to make it out to Omaha to go go watch my Sooners. Didn't get the opportunity to. And the next year, they didn't really look so hot. Uh, now you, they come back out this year. You got guys like Spikerman. Uh, I mean, that, if you you got a name like that. You're you're just bound to be a good athlete, right? Um, and so you know you've you've got guys that that stood up big time this year. Oklahoma has been really uh, really hot. Another really good team is Oklahoma State. They kind of handed it to us early in the in the season in non conference play, uh, and then of course we got the best of them in in, uh, in conference play. But Oklahoma State, another very good team. If I had to pick a team outside of Oklahoma to win, I'd say Oklahoma State's kind of my my second place team. Uh, TCU not as good as I was expecting them to be this year. They're just you usually expect TCU to be that 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 team to look at in the Big Twelve. Um, but then I think like a West Virginia is kind of a dark horse to me. Uh, one of those teams oh, that man. could really surprise people because they're looking really good uh, and hot going towards the end of the season. Um, but Blake, I'll, I'll turn it over to you. Who, you. who you like over there in the Big Twelve right now? Uh, obviously, like you said, the the front runner has got to be Oklahoma. Uh, Oklahoma State. They've always bring the offense. Uh, I really like their park too. I, I would love to get out to a, a a series at Oklahoma State. It just looks like a fun atmosphere. Uh, and look, West Virginia, they got the kid that can smash. I forget his name off the top of my head, but kid can absolutely rake. Uh, he hits the long ball, uh, can hit gap to gap. He's, he's super talented. Uh, my thing with West Virginia though, is I'm just, I know they can hit. I just want to see how their pitching might hold up in the postseason, uh, through a regional or maybe a super regional, however far they go. Uh, and, and yeah, TCU, that's the one I was a little, upset with i guess i could say is uh, you know you usually kind of look at them to be a super regional omaha type team and this year it just hasn't really clicked uh, and it might in the postseason you know that teams teams happen. sometimes yeah teams sometimes like when they get into conference the conference tournament they click look at Ole miss a couple years ago Ole miss was the last team into the sec tournament they played themselves into the NCAA tournament. They won like two games in the SEC tournament. They let them into the NCAA tournament as the very last team into that tournament, and they won the national championship. Yeah, they had they had to so, fight back from the from the losers bracket and, and get themselves yeah. back into it. I mean that that was crazy, uh, it was and not. it was one of those teams too that whenever Ole Miss won that year, it's like man, if if you got to lose to somebody, at least you, I mean losing to a team like that, it's like you you couldn't be too bitter about it because you made it all the way there. Uh, and oh, they beat y'all, didn't they? Yeah, they did. Yeah, they beat Oklahoma. Oh, yeah, yeah. And yeah. so, I mean, it was like, man, like I got to cheer for them too a little bit because I like the underdog story, but it was hard for me because I've I've got to cheer on my Sooners. Um, yeah. So it, it sucked, but I, I was happy for them too at the same moment. If that makes any sense, um, just because yeah. like fighting through that Oklahoma softball did that. That was the first one of this dynasty. So that would have been, man, three years ago. Four years ago, because <laughs> we're going on four in a row here for softball. But uh, Oklahoma softball did that, where they they had to battle through through the losers bracket to get back into the tournament, basically, and you know winning yeah. winning two games at a, at a time against the same team. That's tough. Um, but yeah, I mean, Ole Miss did the same thing that year. Uh, that that was a lot of fun. But yeah, I mean, TCU for sure, a, a big big dud there. Um, I, I feel like maybe even Texas Tech too is what was a team that. Looked like they started off hot in the beginning of the se- of the season and just kind of fizzled out, and I'm I'm not really sure what was going wrong with them. Um, but Jeremy, who do you like over here in the Big Twelve? I mean, but looking at the Big Twelve, I'm really curious to see what West Virginia is obviously capable and able to do for this upcoming post. But I mean, there's one team that I know, Josh, you you hate them in football, and it's a it's a big rivalry, and yeah, those horns better stay down, baby. But I mean, <laughs> uh, Texas is just. They've been playing really, really good baseball. Obviously, I mean, this is why they're they're sitting. I believe it's the number three, seed number three seed. Or, yeah, yeah. Then I mean, it goes Texas Oklahoma, is, Oklahoma State, and Texas. I mean, it's kind of crazy. Yeah. You got, uh, you know, the bedlam rivalry, and then the 
yep. Red River rivalry down below it. And I didn't want to no bring it up. Keep but them horns down. Somebody had to, but still horns down. The end <laughs> I didn't mention them. Uh, they are looking pretty good this year overall. Uh, yeah. I'm trying to think. I, I'm pretty sure we swept that series, though, if I remember correctly. I might have to look that up. Mm. But yeah, I mean, a lot of fun. I mean, it's it's been crazy to kind of kind of see all of this. Um, I'm trying to see too, just on the overall rankings. I just pulled this up. I don't know if oh yeah, Texas is ranked number twenty four. And then you got Oklahoma State mm-hmm. at nineteen. Uh, and then Oklahoma is up at wow, they bumped up to number eight. They were down at like number twelve or thirteen last week. So yeah, I mean big big twelve is, is definitely a shocker to me is is how many teams you have in the top that could could really do something big. Because uh, I feel like you could really look at those top five seeds uh going down. I think Kansas number five. Uh yeah. but I, I feel like you could you could look at those top five seeds and really pick somebody out of, out of those top five and draw it out of hat, and it wouldn't yeah. shock me uh, that they end up winning that tournament. But Oklahoma yeah. by far won the end season, uh, you know, the overall wins. Oh, easily. Just for sure. dominated. I'm pretty sure there was like nine mm-hmm. games left of the season, and they already secured it. So, I mean, I'm, I've been ecstatic to, to watch the, the Sooners do so well. Um, but let's jump over to the Big Ten now, because uh, like I said, I don't – I mean, outside of Illinois, I don't really think I have a whole lot to say on the, on the Big Ten. You got – uh, Ohio State, Nebraska are playing. Uh, so, I mean, obviously I'll try to cheer a little bit for Nebraska, even though they just kind of been up and down all season long where it looks like they got a really good game and then they lose one that they shouldn't lose. Um, so, yeah, this this Big Ten tournament could, could be very interesting. Well, Iowa's got one. They got one in them with Brody Brett. Uh, I got to watch him in Jacksonville earlier this year. And if you ever get the chance to see him throw, it is insane. <laughs> it, like when I tell you, it is insane how good that dude is. He's, he touches 104. And I'm not talking about just in the first inning. I'm talking about in the third, fourth, fifth inning. He's pumping cheddar. But the only problem is, is I would don't have a soul behind him in that bullpen. I mean, nothing. And they're not that great offensively. Uh, so that that's their downfall. I guess you just got to – I mean, man, the Big Ten's such a bad, bad baseball conference. Look, it snows up there almost year-round. I mean, who wants to play baseball up there? Take out the uh, word almost. It never has not snowed. No, what they, what they <laughs> yeah. do is they travel down to your states down south yeah. to go practice. Yeah. So, nice you know, you got yeah. to get out of the snow to come down there. So, I mean, I guess you could take Illinois. Like, I I didn't even watch I, – I look, I don't watch Big Ten baseball uh, just because I, I, of that I'm, reason. I'm, like, like, trying to remember the last – I mean, other than Nebraska, because I've seen – I've, I've watched Nebraska games. Yeah. Uh, they, they, they actually blew, like, a 5-1 to one lead against the Sooners early in the season in non-conference oh. play. Um, yeah, so because I remember we went out for something. I think it, my, my aunt came up from Oklahoma, and we all went out to dinner – or to, to lunch, and so I was like, all right, I'm going to shut, shut the phone off. We're losing a 5-1 anyways. I mean, just put that to the side. I'll, I'll pay attention to family and everything. And then, like, you know, I, I look over, and I'm just like, oh, I'm just going to double-check and see what that game ended at. And we came back to win that, like, 5-5 to uh, you know, seven to five or whatever it was. And I'm like, oh, what the – how did they just blow that? Because like, it was, like, the sixth or seventh inning whenever I turned it off. So I'm like, all right. But, wow. yeah, I mean, that's, that's just Big Ten baseball to me. I feel like I don't see a team that really stands out. I mean – Obviously, Illinois being one of the, really the best team in the Big Ten. Um, what about Purdue or anything like maybe Indiana? All, all, it takes is, all it takes is one team to upset them, uh, you know, and, and kind of take them down. Yeah, what's Indiana and uh, Maryland looking like? I know those are two kind of respectable. Yeah. I mean, I'm looking I know at the – Purdue's uh, playing Indiana. Because I know Indiana State's doing good this year in baseball, but outside of – I mean, Indiana, no uh, – Purdue. I don't know. I'm, I'm looking into the standings and stuff, trying to find them. Uh, and I don't. I don't know. I haven't heard much from the Big Ten in baseball. I've as much as I've paid attention to college baseball this year. Like I said, I've I've heard a lot of the. I've watched a lot of SEC and Big Twelve. Yeah. Uh, I've caught I've caught quite a bit of ACC. I, I haven't heard really anything like Pac-12 and Big Ten, which are basically the same conference now. Uh, mm-hmm. I haven't really heard much of anything over there. So. <laughs> Uh, it'll it'll be interesting to say the least. Uh, maybe, maybe it'll be quite a bit like that Pacers versus Knicks series that we had to oh my wrestle through. 
Just a terrible series. Hated it. Hated every Everyone moment of it. Everyone was clapping at the end because that mediocre of a series was over. <laughs> Pretty much. Pretty much. Um, let's go ahead and jump over to the Pac-12. I really I don't know anything about Pac-12 baseball this year at all, other than I think Oregon. Oregon was a team. Uh, Oregon State, too. Oregon, yeah, obviously, I think, yeah, Oregon State's a good team uh, for sure. Yeah. So I guess I wasn't thinking of them. Um, man, looking through the, the Big 12, I mean, Arizona's usually a good team. Uh, I guess they are number one seed, so that's that makes sense. Mm-hmm. But USC's I just, up there. I don't, I don't see like an Omaha contender out of out of uh, the Pac-12 at all. Or, I would State, go, I think, but outside of I, that. I, I would go Arizona. Uh, Oregon State, and then I know Oregon, I know they're pretty decent, but I'm just not so sure about their pitching. Uh, I watched that Oregon State and Oregon series, and uh, I'm pretty sure Oregon State took two out of three from them, and Oregon, uh, their bullpen ended up kind of giving it up to Oregon State late. Uh, but, yeah, I, I think those – those three teams you could really watch out for. Look, the downfall to the Pac-12, man, is you kind of you kind of had you've had UCLA be down for a couple years. Yeah. You've had USC kind of be down for a couple years in baseball. Uh, Arizona State's been down for a long time. Uh, that's really hurt Stanford. Uh, they've been to Omaha numerous times over the past couple years. I don't think they've played great. Uh, this year so that kind of hurts the Pac-12 and just everything that's happened with that conference I don't think it gets the the love anymore I don't think people really care about it anymore so no. well and you brought up yeah. UCLA and I was looking for okay they are a number six seed I see they just have them listed as as go. California no that'd be Cal yeah. that'd be Cal so yeah I don't UCLA is not even in the the, the conference tournament which is just shocking to me because that's yeah. that's definitely a, a a good baseball school um yeah, I mean, I'm I'm looking at it. I'm just I'm trying to think of a moment that I've seen any of these teams and thought like that's that's a good contender. Uh, I think I'll probably ride with maybe like a Oregon State or uh, Arizona just because those are your top two teams. Uh, and, and I think Oregon's yeah. Oregon's one that I've seen a little bit. I'm pretty sure Oklahoma played Oregon early early in the season they and they looked good back then. That's pretty much all that I've really seen from them. I might have seen little clips here and there uh, throughout the season, and so. I do think I, I do think that would be a team that I could I could probably get behind on there. Um, but uh, you brought up Oregon State. That's that's a tough one for me to go away from. Just knowing how how much of a baseball school they've been really in the last like five years at least. Um, but I, I guess Jeremy, any thoughts on the Pac-12? Of what I can obviously say about the Pac-12, it is pretty much a sum of what you just mentioned. I can really honestly go with the top three teams here: Arizona, Oregon State, Oregon. Those are the three the three dogs that I can definitely say I've watched. I have seen a little bit of Oregon baseball this over the TV and watching Oregon and their style of play. They, they do play really good baseball. I will admit that they got really good pitching. They got really good coaching. And then it definitely, it definitely is a good side to see for Oregon, obviously being uh, a multi multi team that where they can play obviously more than just one sport compared to just football or something like that. But I mean, Oregon's definitely been one of those, those schools that they're, <laughs> An all around good program. It doesn't matter what sport, but I'm really riding on Oregon. But obviously, it's kind of hard not to be on the Arizona train when they're sitting at number one, to say the least. Yeah. Um, jumping over to another conference that I'm sure we don't know much about at all. Uh, it's kind of a no name conference. It's called SEC. I'm not really sure what that stands for. Like, uh, who's no, that? Um, SEC. Def- definitely. I feel like. Man, it's 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 hard not to look at this conference and see, think that this has to yeah. be the conference you ride with, thinking that this is the favorite, um, just because of how how many dominant teams there are. I feel like ACC and SEC this year overall uh, most most rounded conferences. Mm-hmm. Um, but taking a look through here, I'm I'm looking down through, uh, and it's 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 a different year in the SEC. I feel like to me, uh. You, you've got. I feel like Kentucky is a, has been a team that I've seen throughout the season kind of surprise me on uh, how well yeah. they are. Uh, obviously, Vanderbilt, known for mathematics and baseball, and yeah. they didn't really show yeah. up for the baseball season much at all this season. That was Focusing kind of kind of surprising there. to see the Commodores kind of fall off. And LSU, <clears throat> another team. Uh, LSU just won it last year, didn't they? Yep. And then this year they just completely fall off the face of the earth. 
Um, mm-hmm. And so that was a little shocking to me. But Tennessee has been dominant, uh, I feel like, over in, uh, in the SEC. Uh, for me, I feel like I'm, I'm riding with Tennessee, um, which, yeah, I guess they're, they're number one seed too. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to mm-hmm. stick with Tennessee. I think that's that's the team to beat. But I do think if you were, were going to look at kind of some underdogs – that might be able to pull off and pull off some upsets. I feel like Florida is kind of one of those teams. Uh, I guess A and M another another good team, but I feel like Florida is one of those teams that I could see kind of being uh, maybe that dark horse to come out of it uh, and, and maybe pull something off. I'm going with the Arkansas Razorbacks. I okay. think uh, the Arkansas Razorbacks they have Hagen Smith in their back pocket, and I think he is the best pitcher in America. Uh, and they also produce on the offensive side of the ball. They can play small ball. They can hit the long ball. Uh, Dave Van Horn has got a breakthrough, fellas. He has been uh, as close as a drop foul ball against the Oregon State Beavers in 2018 uh, to a national championship, and it's time that he breaks through and wins it this year. Look, you got Tennessee. You got Arkansas. You got Texas A&M. Uh, you got Kentucky, Charlie Condone at Georgia hitting 35 home runs this year. Uh, probably going to win the Golden Spikes, uh, in my opinion. Uh, you got Cags down at Florida. You never know about them. They could get hot. Uh, man, you you just – this conference is incredible. You know, you, you got Ole Miss, LSU, Alabama. Uh, you look over at the East, man, even though uh-huh. Vanderbilt didn't – yeah, they can hit, man. They can hit. Um, I know Auburn, I know we didn't make it to the SEC tournament. We were the worst team in the conference this year. Uh, but somehow we took two out of three from Alabama in our last uh, series of the year. But that Alabama team can hit. Uh, Mississippi State, they've had a really good year. They've they've surprised people. They could run up on you. Their pitching has been much better than it was last year. Um what, Look, wasn't this, this kind of a wasn't this kind of a season for Auburn too? That like going into the season, it felt like man, this could be a dangerous team. Uh, yeah. What what um, what happened? You just had a brutal brutal start to. You had a brutal conference start, man. Like you had to come out and you had to play um, Vanderbilt. Uh, then you had to play Arkansas. Then you had to play. Um, uh, Texas A&M, and, and it was just one series after another, man, where you didn't get a break. You had Tennessee in there, Kentucky in there. Like, you didn't get a break. You were having to play the top ten teams in the country every single week, Mississippi State, and uh, you couldn't win one-run games. Like, Auburn had – I think they had ten games, ten SEC games. You played 30. Ten of them were, ten of them were decided by one run – or less, all right? Two runs or less. And they were two and eight in those games. <clears throat> mm. That that's your that's your season there. All right. Say you say you go um say you go six and four in those games. Well they won eight conference games. So if you go six and four, all right, then you're probably up to about eleven wins, twelve wins. All right, in conference, you make the SEC tournament, you got a chance to win a couple games and go to the postseason. So they, that was just, um, you know, pitching, man. Auburn just didn't have the pitching, and and they had a couple guys get hurt. And once all that stuff starts happening, uh, your lineup gets depleted, and it, you're not going to survive in this conference. And, uh, you know, look, any team in the SEC – can win this thing. The reason I'm going with Arkansas is because I know Tennessee has a potent offense, but I don't know if I trust their pitching the way I do Arkansas's pitching because you got the Tiger kid, uh, you got him, you got Hagen Smith, uh, you got the Arkansas bullpen, man. They're really, really talented from top to bottom. I know Tennessee. I know what they can do, but their pitching does scare me a little bit. Uh, yeah, I know I can, they can, I can understand that ball. for sure, and that's that's the biggest thing for, for baseball yeah. too, and it's something that's mm-hmm. kind of overlooked in, in a portion of it because it's just one player. But that's even more important. I mean, that that is your defense. That's more important than a quarterback on the field. Uh, yeah. I mean, because he's he's touching every pitch, uh, every every time on on defense, he's the guy that's got to go through first. Uh, and so you know that's that's kind of a, a dangerous dangerous thing to to be lacking on. But Jeremy. We got over there in the SEC. 
over in the SEC, I mean, I was obviously looking at them Razorbacks from Arkansas, but I'm more I'm really curious to what Mississippi State's going to be able to bring to the plate. I mean, sitting at a number five seed, I'm really curious for what I think they can be a dark horse team. They can definitely yeah. really surprise a lot of people. I mean. Otherwise, Van, I was going to obviously say Vandy, but I think they were focusing too much on math outside of the baseball factor. Um, no, but Mississippi State, they've definitely shown a lot of uh, a lot of maturity, and they've just – they've gone to play some really tough games, and they've came out of those games with some really good wins. And I'm just – I'm really excited to see what Mississippi State is able to bring to the table and show what everybody else and they can really bring um, – and they can bring just to the, the game itself. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm super excited. Uh, this has been probably the most baseball I've watched in possibly my la- my lifetime this year. Uh, and so it's that been a really fun us. year to watch. Uh, and so I'm watching the Yankees right now. That's the reason I keep looking up at the TV. Yeah. So yeah, I figured you got some kind of game going on up there. Yeah, there's always got to be baseball on the Blake House. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nah, I'm, I'm I'm excited for it though, man. I'm 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 pumped. I think this is going to be a really fun. Uh, really overall, and mm-hmm. all of the tournaments, obviously, going to be watching the Big Twelve. And then I think the ACC and SEC are both going to be really fun ones that I think I think those are two conferences for sure. You're going to have a, a lot of big surprises. Like, man, that team just now came out and won. That that team just fought back from from the losers bracket to big, get back in it. Uh, and then yeah. maybe maybe you'll have a Pac-12 team surprise us too and show up. And we're like, wow, I didn't see didn't see a uh, Arizona State coming out here and doing this. Uh, whatever the case may be, um, yeah. but. Let's go ahead and jump over real quick. I want to touch on softball. I don't know how much you guys were able to catch this weekend, um, but it was pretty much on nonstop in my house trying to trying to watch all the softball, see who who I've got on the slate, who who could be my next potential opponents uh, for my Sooners because we're fighting for four this in guy. a row, dynasty. I mean, if you want to, you want to honestly, like we we've, we've talked about this quite a bit. I mean, there's not a whole lot of dynasties in sports that are better than this this dynasty that's been put together by Patty Gasso. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's, she's done a phenomenal job. And each year it's like, well, you just lost Jocelyn Allo. What are you going to do now? Uh, you know, this past year it was, you just lost Jordy Ball, the best pitcher in the land. What are you going to do now? Uh, and, and she just finds a way to fight back. And right now she's got like six pitchers <laughs> that are sitting there. I mean, they're, they're ready to go. Uh, and, and even just the other, the other night, uh, it was against Oregon. Uh, they had... They took Maxwell out. She she just had a phenomenal six innings. Took her out, uh, and I don't remember who they put in for her. Um, but then she just wasn't doing good. Oregon scored like two or three on Oklahoma, so she switched it. Uh, switched it up. Put Maxwell back out on the mound to finish off the game. She said, "No, you know what? You're not finished. You go out there and finish this off." Closed out the game. Had a phenomenal game. Um, but looking around, Texas, uh, that's a scary team. They they beat Oklahoma in the regular season. They were the number one team. Uh, coming into this tournament, number one seed, uh, and so that's that they they looked dominant all all weekend long. Uh, didn't have a single loss. Then you had Texas A and M also come out of their regional, uh, which was uh, you know it was in uh, Bryan College Station. Um, so you see, got Texas against Texas A and M. That's going to be a fun one in the super regionals. Uh, that should be down in Austin. Then you've got uh, LSU came out. Uh, they they looked dominant. Uh, swept everybody right on on, on the on the slate, um, and then you also have Stanford coming out. Uh, so that one should be uh, at Stanford. Uh, so that's that's going to be a Stanford Super Regional. Then you've got Stillwater uh, Super Regional with uh, Oklahoma State going against Arizona, which the Arizona team kind of surprised me. Uh, I didn't think they were going to come through. I thought Arkansas was going to be able to pull it off. Uh, Arkansas didn't look good at all uh, in in their regional out there in, in Fayetteville. Um, but then over in the Lafayette, you had Baylor come out clean. They had a really good win over Ole Miss, I think it was, uh, that I saw. That was that was a really good one. Uh, and then you also had you know Louisiana coming out of that one. I thought for sure Louisiana was a team uh, that would be able to make it out. Um, but you know Baylor coming out uh, still, uh, they they haven't lost a single single game in the, that series yet. And then also Florida. Uh, and then over on the other side of the bracket, you've got. Uh, and then Knox, Knoxville, so you've got Tennessee versus Alabama, an SEC matchup. I think that'll be a really fun one. Uh, you've got a number mm-hmm. three ranked, uh, you know, seed uh, Tennessee, uh, and then you've got UCLA taking on Georgia at UCLA for the super regional there. Uh, and then you've got Missouri. Missouri actually surprised me a lot because they they had to go through the losers bracket to get themselves back into it. Uh, and so they had to beat Omaha twice 
in, in, in that matchup to be able to get past Omaha. And Omaha was looking good. Uh, and I was, I was really cheering for Omaha just the way that they were playing. Um, but then Missouri ends up coming out of that. Uh, Duke also won, uh, which the, in that, that regional, I was thinking uh, South Carolina was one of those teams I was keeping an eye on. Utah, another really good team. Um, but Duke ends up coming out of that regional. Uh, so that'll be hosted in Columbia uh, at, at Missouri. Uh, and then a really fun one that I'm excited for because this brings back uh, the uh, an old national championship rematch. You got Oklahoma in Norman for the Super Regional against Florida State. Uh, Oklahoma just dominant, kept on winning uh, all, all weekend long. Uh, Florida State also one of those teams. And, of course, I was texting you, Blake. I was rooting for your, your Auburn Tigers. But Florida State, the better team, was able to come out of that one. Yeah, one thing I want to say is uh, I, I watched a couple – softball games this weekend from Auburn Tigers and uh look Auburn had Florida State on the ropes and and first thing I'll say is uh the the night before they had UCF Saturday night they were playing UCF and uh Matty Penta threw all 12 innings uh, had 21 strikeouts and uh threw like 200 pitches and uh just gave it everything for the Auburn Tigers. Auburn comes back. They play Florida State Sunday. Got to beat them twice. And uh, Auburn's tied up in the sixth inning. And, uh, you know, Shelby took the mound. She had pitched all game. And and uh, Mickey Dean, our coach, who is retired now, so-called retired, uh, <laughs> he leaves her out there and Florida State gets the bases loaded. And then he wants to throw Maddie Penta uh into the wolves man and and uh she gets two quick strikeouts there's a bad call on a on a third strikeout and uh he calls it a ball and they end up walking a run in and then the floodgates open so uh you know it it happened i I think auburn had a much better season than kind of what we anticipated Uh, but we're glad that you know mickey dean is gone like we thank him Uh, but i think the auburn softball program got worse and uh, he didn't he, he didn't even make it out of a regional in his time at Auburn. So uh, seeing him leave is uh, really, really good to me. I, I think it's a, a, a breath of fresh air for the Auburn Tigers. We just got to nail the coaching hire. So uh, there's some there's some work to do for Auburn softball. But look, th- this tournament's going to be fun. Yeah. Uh, Texas, yeah. Oklahoma, LSU, all those teams, man, Tennessee, UCLA, UCLA, the godfather of college softball. They're the ones who really got it started out there on the West Coast. And you got and, a chance uh, again for another Oklahoma-Texas matchup in the national championship, I believe. Yeah, man, if, the if SEC I, is if, just If so I'm dominant. drawing this up correctly. Yeah, the SEC, man. I mean, <laughs> SEC is just dominant. Um, yeah. But the thing with b- baseball and softball both that I love so much is that the regular season matters more than just about any sport I can think of. Because yeah. out of all of these uh, regionals that happened, only two teams <clears throat> didn't win their home regional. Only yeah. two out of ten, I think. Um, let's see here. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, 16. Yeah, my bad. It's 16. Yeah, yeah, 16. 16 regionals, and only two of them didn't win their own home regional. Yeah. Uh, that's, 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 nice. that's awesome to me. That just, that just goes to show how much the regular season matters – a heck of a lot, uh, and then a- able to, able to get that super regional too, because you're not just fighting for a regional; you're hoping that you can host that super regional and be at home. For Oklahoma, you get a little bit of an advantage because then you go on to the to the World Series. It's right there in your backyard in Oklahoma City, uh, and so uh. maybe a little unfair, but that's just where college softball it, it, that's where it lives. Without yeah. without Oklahoma, I don't think you have this many eyes on college softball, honestly, uh, you know, True. much like, much like maybe in other women's sports if without one key player, maybe you're not watching that WNBA at all or seeing those clips pop up all over the place and flooding my uh-huh. timeline with it. Uh, and this dude, I blocked them. Hey, I, I wanted to send <laughs> you one. I, do, I wanted to send you one the other day. It, I, I know I sent you guys the one where it was like Angel Reese making Dang. a dunk. Angel Reese making her first oh dunk, and she goes God. down and steals it and lay, <laughs> lay up. Dunk. I was laughing too hard at that. And then I saw another one where it was like, uh, I can't believe Angel Reese or whoever it was that they made this. They made this and one, and it was like they fumbled through the lane and like threw it behind them, and it just happened to go in. 
I'm like, that wasn't skill. That was total luck. What is going on here? But softball, on the other hand, extremely fun to watch. Uh, And to me, I think it's more fun than baseball. Uh, That's my opinion. Uh, you're, you're, You're totally, totally welcome to disagree with me. I think college softball is more fun than baseball. Faster pace. Uh, you have a lot of more bigger plays and stuff, uh, and so that's that's kind of part of it. But we also we also shrink down the field, put a bigger ball out there, and a lot of these other other th- factors to it. So 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 much fun, uh, and I love the energy yeah. that goes into it too. But when it gets to Omaha, I'm excited. I'm definitely going down this year, joining in the mm-hmm. festivities, all that fun stuff. Yeah, baseball is just harder. It is 100. Uh, percent And and I know there might be you know some women that get in the comments or something, but uh, it, it's just harder. All right. And I, I will uh, say, so I, I, I will challenge you a little bit. So Trevor Bowers YouTube page, he did this really fun thing where he was inviting, uh, you know, a lot of, so he, he uh, brought in, I don't know, I'm drawing, drawing a blank on her name, but uh, one of Oklahoma's really good pitchers. Uh, and mm-hmm. I can see her face too. And I'm upset that I can't think of her name, but uh, so he brought in a few, few softball players, had them, uh, you know, so the guys had to try to hit the softball. The movement of the softball makes right. makes up for some of that difficulty. Maybe not all of it. And I will agree with you. Yeah. I think baseball is overall harder. But the movement of the softball, the way that the, like those rise balls, I, I've yeah. I had a I had a, a chick throw me a rise ball because I was like, you know, I, I was curious and like she well I didn't know what she was throwing, but I was just kind of curious. Like softball is not that hard, right? And like that that rise ball gets you. You can watch it climb right up as you're swinging. Yeah. That that kind of stuff is crazy. I do think that makes up for some of the difficulty, but overall, I agree with you. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Softball is tough. It, it's it's hard. Anything moving at that that rate of speed, uh, and you're that close, it's difficult. Uh, mm-hmm. And I think that's one thing that helps the game of softball is how fast paced it is and the the exciting electric plays it has in it. I think that is certainly one thing that that gives it the nod over baseball. Yeah, sometimes baseball can be boring. You. You really have to be a true baseball head in order to be able to like. Right now, I'm sitting here watching the Yankees and the Mariners, and it's three to nothing. The Yankees. Uh, a lot of people would be turning this game off because the Mariners can't score. But if you're a true baseball head, you're watching this and you're admiring what Marcus Stroman is doing on the mound. I mean, he's been brilliant. He's just kept this Mariners lineup just off balance. And, and it's, that is what I love about baseball is it can be slow paced. I don't care. I like watching the pitching. Uh, I love watching the game waiting on an Aaron judge bomb or something like a Julio Rodriguez bomb. That's what I wait on in baseball. Uh, and I know not everybody's like that. I get it. I understand it. They do want to see the fast paced stuff, but, uh, yeah, man, I love college softball. I think it's great. I think what Oklahoma has done for the sport is great. Oklahoma city is a great city to host, uh, I think they've done a phenomenal job to just amp up the the sport and just that whole scenery around there. Heck of a city! Uh, it's turned out to be a great sport to watch. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's it's been a lot of fun. But let's go ahead and jump over. We'll touch on the NHL playoffs real quick. Really, all that we missed out on uh, since the last time that we were on, which was last Friday, uh, Panthers beat the Bruins, Stars uh, beat the Avalanche. Both of those game, those series, four to two, uh, so they move on to their respected uh, conference finals. We saw the Oilers come out and win five to one on Saturday. That was yeah. big. Uh, so that, that was, was like like you mentioned a moment ago, maybe a, a little bit of an uh, an unexpected turnaround uh, in that game. Um, and then now tonight, uh, as we're speaking, uh, we've got we've got game, uh, seven. game seven of the Canucks Oilers. Like I've been saying, man, I I just don't I don't know who this Canucks team is. How can I get behind them? If, if I, I I could never bet on them because I'm looking at them, I'm like, I, they haven't gotten any publicity really the entire season no. long. No, I mean nobody knows who this team is. That's that's just the mind blowing part to it. But a, a little part of me likes seeing this random team pop up uh, and and show their dominance here. But you've just got to root for McDavid, right? You've got to no. root for McDavid. I um, mean, no. he's just—he's so fun to watch. This Oilers, this Oilers, both their penalty kill and their power play unit. One of the, for sure their power play unit, one of the best I have ever seen. It's not as smooth as it was last year. Last year I felt like they were just nonstop rotations, and you couldn't catch up to where the puck was. 
and it was scores every time. This year, it's not quite as quite as smooth, quite as fast, but it's still there, and it's one of the best I've seen. Uh, and so, I mean, this this team, when you've got guys like Dry Sidle and you've got uh, you know, it, obviously Nugent Connor Hopkins. McDavid, yeah, Nugent Hopkins, another another great guy, uh, and and very good at uh, getting, getting in there and, and helping the whenever Vendor McDavid's Kane. not on the ice. Um, so I mean they they've they've got the guys to do it, um, yeah. It, can they pull it out? I mean, we we will either sound really smart or really stupid tomorrow when this re- episode releases. You guys got the Oilers or the Canucks pulling it out here in Game Seven? I'll take I'll take the Canucks. Um, I think the Canucks are going to do it. I mean, I'm 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 right there with you. I'm just I'm cheering for McDavid. Yeah, man, because like I want the superstars to move on, uh, but I just think the Canucks are just the better team, and I don't want it to be like that. Because yeah, I do want to see, in my opinion, one of the faces of hockey, and I, I want to see the superstars keep playing. But yeah, I, I think the Canucks move on, man. I just think all around they're the better team, and uh, and it's their moment tonight in Game Seven. Yeah, Blake. I know you got to get going, so I'm gonna let you jump off, yeah. man. Uh, we'll, we'll I'll make sure holler catch at you, boy. You. Yeah, we'll make yeah, sure man, catch hey, you next one. But hey, we're, we're we are pulling for the Oilers now. All right. Yeah, I am. Like, I am. One hundred percent. I'll all be right. in that group chat tonight. All right. We're, we're, I'm, we're I'm staying up. Good. All right. All right. I'm, I'm about to put me. I'm about to put me a dip in. I'm about to go in here, get ready, <laughs> and, uh, and I'm staying I'll up. Same. So I'll do the same. All right, boys. <laughs> Have a good one, bro. I'll let y'all. Jeremy, who do you oh, got here in this, this Game 7 matchup? I'm going to be completely honest with you. As much as I would love to see the Edmonton Oilers keep going, I think their time is up. I think the Vancouver Canucks and what they have been able to do this entire postseason, it is time to get their name known. I mean, you, you've you literally said this numerous times over the, the last couple of series for the playoffs. I mean, who is Vancouver? I mean – you look at obviously for Vancouver Canucks, obviously with JT Miller, Quinn Hughes, and that's about it, honestly, for the Vancouver Canucks roster. Well, I mean, and even them, they're not those stars that you hear their name night in, night out, like a McDavid or Drysidel or or sure. even uh, in, uh, Nugent Hopkins. You know, Nugent you, Hopkins, you don't you don't you don't hear yeah Evander Kane uh, definitely definitely want to be mentioned on their team too. Uh, mm-hmm. You just don't you don't hear the Canucks big players like Miller, you know, you don't have yeah. them popping up and, and you, they don't have the the highlights that you see. It may just yeah. be that they're way out there in the middle of nowhere, Canada, that we just forget <laughs> that they're a team out there. That's probably what's going on. Uh, and, and I feel bad that that's the case, but that may be just what, what it is. Um, but yeah, I mean, for me, I'm, I'm pulling Oilers. Uh, maybe, maybe it'll be Blake and I against you for tonight then. Hey, I know I'm, you're pulling I'm for the, this man. Canucks team. There's there's a weird part of me that that is rooting for the Canucks team because like I said it's just so weird to see them this far to get to the to the conference finals. I like to see the the parity. Mm-hmm. I like that. Um yeah. but I just I don't know. I'm I'm I've had a hard time because I felt like the Oilers were going to run this thing like 4 to 2 uh, and it just felt that way the entire time and uh, could the Canucks just keep on pushing it one game further. Yeah, the Canucks just definitely find a way to get to they're literally a thorn in the Edmonton Oilers' side right now. I mean, for obviously for what they have been able to do. I mean, like I said, for JT Miller, Elias Patterson, or Patterson, excuse me, um, Bozier, Quinn Hughes. And I mean, like you said, I'm just listing off some people here, but I mean, like you said, this isn't a team to where you, you pull up ESPN and you just keep seeing highlights of the Vancouver Canucks. I mean, don't get me wrong. Obviously, you have a Hughes brother. I mean, obviously, kind of, kind of like the too. kind of like the uh, the Pac-12, where we just forget that it's yeah. out there. Uh, that's a really good point to honestly bring it up for the Vancouver Canucks. I mean, outside of that, like one over Quinn Hughes and Jack Hughes play together. Obviously, we have a brother game. That's always nice to see. Then um, they'll have another one eventually getting up into the NHL. So we'll have a triple threat for the Hughes brothers. So it would be really cool to see all three of them play at one team, but. No, I, I'm going to Vancouver for for this night. So let's see, and then we've we, uh, I guess for the finals right now over on the Eastern Conference Finals, we do have the Rangers move on uh, mm-hmm. against the Panthers. Uh, so we've got that matchup, and then we've got the deciding factor tonight to decide for the Western Conference Finals. 
Um, mm-hmm. And let's see, the, the those start on Wednesday. Um, so we'll yes. kind of get into those, even though, uh, you know, because the Panthers Rangers will play game one, but we'll, we'll get to them before that game by the time we're recording. So it, it'll all make sense. We'll kind of give our previews for that and everything whenever we get there. But right. what we missed on the NBA, jumping over to the NBA playoffs. That's right. We've got two major sports with playoffs going on right now. Uh, the NBA has been a fun one, uh, but just so annoying to watch the Knicks get a big lead and blow it. <laughs> blow it. And then the Pacers do the same thing. Uh, it, no, it's just it's terrible. Terrible. Man, I feel like I'm about to sneeze, but I can't get it out. Um, Pacers <laughs> end up pulling that one out and just dominate. <coughs> there it is. Got there it. you oh, go. Thanks. All right, 130 to 109. They move on. They're going to have to go against Boston to lose the Eastern Conference Finals against Boston. Uh, and then the Timberwolves pull off the upset and do as we were cheering them on to do. Let's Ant-Man go. doing his thing, uh, looking Ant-Man. looking dominant uh, overall. That that whole team just so good. I guess backing up just before that the, uh, those happen on Saturday, something that we didn't get to uh, discuss yet. Mavericks win it by one point in Game Six to boot the uh, the Thunder out. I really wanted to see the Thunder make it, man. I did uh, cheering for him, SGA. Uh, it is an, an absolute beast uh, seeing Chet do what he's been doing out there. Uh, you got Josh Giddy. I mean, that is a star-studded young team, and I wanted to see them get their chance uh, and, and get yeah. their opportunity. Uh, they couldn't quite do it. Hats off to the Mavericks, man. They just found a way. They found a way with all of the drama, with all of the injuries, with all of the everything going on with that team this year. They found a way to make it through. Uh, they end up pulling that one off, 117-116, to 116, winning by one point. Uh, and, and pulling out to get get to the Western Conference Finals there. So we're going to have Pacers versus Celtics. That starts on Tuesday, so I guess tomorrow for us, uh, today when everybody's watching this. Uh, and then Mavericks, Timberwolves start on Wednesday. Uh, so a couple of very fun series that we're going to see here. I think the Western Conference is just, they're going to come out of this thing battle-tested and ready to go in the finals to me. I feel like the Timberwolves have a very good shot to take this one. But the Mavericks surprised me against OKC, so we will see. Um, but I mean, it's 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 been a fun one for sure in the NBA. Oh, for sure. I mean, you look at just the Minnesota Timberwolves. I know I've been talking a lot about them. I mean, they came back obviously against a really really good team here, and I can't remember exactly the margin of how many how far they were down. I know they were down a good number. I think. They were down at least the highest. I think, I think I remember points. not at least fifteen. I think it was points. fifteen points, if I remember correctly. I I know there was a, there was a point in time there was down double by digits nine. for sure. Yeah, there was a, they were down by nine before halftime. If you if I'm if I remember correctly, but I mean just for what the Minnesota Timberwolves were able to do after halftime and just be able to come back and pull off a great, great comeback and make their way to the Western Conference Finals. It's definitely a really good game. But you're going to be going against a, a, a really good oh, Mavericks wow. team. A 20-point deficit. I just looked it up to, to double-check. They came back from a 20-point deficit for a 98-90 win over the, over the uh Wow. Nuggets. I mean, just that's hard. Crazy. Well, that and, is... and what's what's what was crazy about that is just how – you know how close both these teams were, but it felt like the Nuggets were the more aggressive team the entire way through, right there until that fourth quarter. It just felt like the, the mm-hmm. Wolves got that that extra boost of confidence and that extra second, you know, that second win coming through, and um, they were able to pull it out. Yeah, I I know one thing that you and I definitely talked about. If you can stop the big man down low, it's it's definitely going to be a good strategy. Well, but. and how do you stop him with with two big guys? And then you got Ant, who basically <laughs> plays like a big guy, uh, yeah. and 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 he's just athletic as can be. Uh, one mm-hmm. thing to to bring up: so the Knicks Pacers game, that was one that the field goal percentage. I had to look it up real quick to pull this up. It was like so I didn't get it right. Wasn't yeah, and it? so the Knicks at one point were like in the seventy percent range. They were dominant. Yeah. All of a sudden, the, the oh how the turntables, the Pacers end the game with sixty seven percent field goal percentage, oh almost seventy percent. Uh, they were fifty four percent from three point land. That is just that, nuts. Wow. Uh, you know, just watching watching what they were able to do as a team. The Pacers really put on a clinic, uh, and they were down for a while too, and able to come back. Uh, really, in the in the fourth quarter, felt like uh, you know really really putting on 
on the clinic and, and doing what they had to do. Um, let's see here. There was 13, I guess really both teams. I, I thought the Pacers had way more three pointers, um, but they just shot it way more efficiently. Uh, so yeah. Yeah, that was a big one. I feel like seeing Tyrese Halliburton finally have that game that we've been talking about and coming out there and, and putting on a show because uh, he yeah. ended with like 26 points. So, you know, to, to see him game. do that, that was that was really big for the Pacers uh, being able to pull it out. So we don't see New York burn down. So good job, yeah. Pacers. You good kept, job. You kept that that city, that state alive. Uh, they must so have that, hurt us just so they can keep the state in New York. I mean, that, the that state was definitely a, a good one to, to, to save us all from. But mm-hmm. that would have been in the news all over the place. Oh, but for sure. Quick reminder to everybody, something I forgot to remind you about. Uh, you can... Make sure to copy yourself some tickets by going to rising2.com slash live. Copy your tickets for free to come and watch us live out at the Herd at Sports Bar and Grill in La Vista, Nebraska. That's the Omaha area. So if you're in the Omaha area this Friday, May 24th, come and check us out. We are going to be at the La Vista Herd at Sports Bar and Grill. So come check us out there. We will be live at 6.30 p.m. Central Time. Uh, we will be live from the venue, but the, the episode that we release, we'll be talking Big Ten football kind of spring football what we've seen some big things happening for each of the top 10 teams i guess the team 10 teams that have the best odds to win the the uh conference and so we're going to talk some college football please come out and uh check us out you can go to rising2.com slash live and uh go cop yourself some free tickets to come and watch us that secures your spot in the door uh to be able to come and watch us live and i believe don't don't quote me on this but i believe there will be Live music that night as well. And if you come a little early, get yourself some food. Uh, I, I was told by one of our producers today in a meeting that uh, apparently the bacon mac and cheese is 100% must have. Ooh. They also have some really good wraps. Their wings are huge. Um, so is that, I was check say, is those that the out. size of their wings? Yeah, something, something like that big. No, they, they are huge. They're very good. Uh, come check it out. Great place to go and eat. Get, grab yourself a drink. Stick around for the show and uh, have a good time. Uh, we'd love to see you come out. So if you're in the Omaha area this Friday, May 24th, it'll be our first time at the Herd at Sports Bar and Grill at 6.30 p.m. Central Time, and you will be able to catch our show live there from the Herd at Sports Bar and Grill in La Vista, Nebraska. But uh, we want to remind everybody, if you're watching on YouTube, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, uh, and go ahead and comment down below and help us out here on love the YouTubes. We appreciate all of you guys so much for all of the support you have given us over there. You can also follow us on social media. We're on X, formerly known as Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all of that fun stuff. And so you can catch us there and also see all of our live updates and things that we're throwing at you. So go follow us over on social media. Uh, and then, of course, as as always, if you were listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts, give us that five-star review. That is the best way to help us over there. Uh, you can check out everything we do at rising2.com. That's R-I-S-I-N-G-T-O.com. Check us out over there. We thank you all so much for all the love, all the support. We'll catch you next time.